Welcome back to Live from Paris. Let's now take a look at the day's business news with Owen. Hello again, Owen. Looking at the Asian markets to start off with, and they've uh, shortchanged the European Central Bank. Yeah, it, like you said, uh, Claire, a bit of a feast, really, uh, on cheap credit from the European Central Bank. And I'm not sure whether some of these investors got that feeling of ind indigestion or that remorse you sometimes get after a huge meal. Because as things look, uh, the markets haven't really reacted in the way the European Central Bank anticipated with that uh, unprecedented new credit lifeline. We'll talk about the details of that in a moment. Let's just show you the numbers there on the board for the markets. The Nikkei is not long closed, uh, off around 0.8%. The Hang Seng it's still trading, uh, still down by around uh, uh, half a percent. Just the Shanghai Composite is holding its head above the water. Uh, the US markets as well caught the tail end of that uh, new credit lifeline unleashed by the European Central Bank. And Wall Street, again, didn't have a great trading session. Yes, the S&P uh, and, the, and the Dow both closed slightly up, but pretty flat. Uh, the Nasdaq uh, taking most of the losses there. Just worth mentioning TripAdvisor. We've been talking a little bit about this week. The uh, online hotel review site floated uh, and made its debut on the Nasdaq on Wednesday. Its share price, though, tumbled nearly 9%. Uh, its market value just a little bit below expectations, around $3.7 billion. So a muted reaction to an unprecedented move by Europe's lender of last resort. Banks devoured the cheap money offered by the ECB's new emergency credit line. The long-term refinancing operation, as it's known, is aimed at giving banks more money to lend to businesses and home buyers. But as Nicholas Rushworth reports, the real concern remains the huge debt racked up by some of the Eurozone's most vulnerable economies. As the ECB president Mario Draghi pulled the rabbit out of the hat, the European Central Bank on Wednesday pumped in its largest amount of credit into Europe's banking system in an unprecedented three-year financing operation. The banks loved it. More than 500 snapped up 489 billion euros in bargain basement loans at a mere 1% interest rate. The goal is to ensure they have the cash to buy sovereign debt and so keep the euro from heading to the wall. But not everyone is convinced. The banks will use the money that way. A better solution would have probably been not to give the money with a minimum interest rate like this, but instead to buy assets directly. What if a state can't pay back the money, or if it's in danger of filing for bankruptcy? If that happens, banks will have to be rescued again and the crisis starts over. This measure, in fact, is playing with fire. Markets in Europe rose modestly initially on the amounts of the loans. They were higher than expected. The euro rose too, but soon resumed a downward trajectory. The verdict in Asia was that the ECB had dampened pessimism, but not done enough to spark optimism. Even though there's a slight, some good news in Europe, the ECB is uh, uh, issuing three-year uh, funding to the commercial banks in Europe, but still that's not enough to uh, keep the market going up. While Father Christmas has arrived early for Europe's banks, fears about the euro persist with several of the most indebted Eurozone countries, including Italy, having to refinance tens of billions of debt in the new year. So the Eurozone debt crisis remains a big concern. As we heard in that report there, countries like Italy and Greece will have billions to refinance in the coming months, particularly Italy, which has to refinance around 200 billion euros of debt. Now, the ECB would say that's not really their problem, and that's, that's true to say. But the problem is with this whole bank uh, funding issue is that uh, it's only one half of the coin. On the same day that the European Central Bank uh, opened up that credit facility for European banks, there was some new data from Fitch, which shows just how bad the situation is regarding uh, European banks and US lenders. Uh, according to Fitch, US money market funds cut their exposure to French banks by 90%. That's over the last six months. That's more than any other country in the Eurozone. Uh, th though it must be said that uh, exposure to most European countries from the US is down. Uh, more worrying, perhaps, for Fitch at least, is that not one French bank features in its top 15 uh, of the most exposed countries or the most exposed banks to US debt. Uh, you've got banks like Barclays, HSBC, Canadian and Australian banks. All of those uh, are exposed to US uh, money, but not the French banks. And those remain the biggest concern, the likes of Société Générale, the likes of BNP Paribas and indeed Credit Agricole. Why do we care? Because European banks need dollars to finance a lot of their operations. They have, hold lots of their 
funding in dollars. And if they can't get cheap dollars from US banks, then it all feeds into this whole credit crunch situation, which we've been seeing in Europe over the last few months. All right, let's now take a look at a few more of the day's business headlines. Bank of America is to pay $335 million to settle claims that discriminated against ethnic minority borrowers. BOA was accused of charging 200,000 African-American and Hispanic clients higher rates than white customers. It also allegedly pushed a higher proportion of them into expensive subprime loans. The firm had denied the allegations, which related to the countrywide mortgage company it acquired in 2008. Yahoo's board will meet later this Thursday to discuss a plan for offloading its Asian investments. It's understood the internet search engine will value its Asian assets at $17 billion. That's almost as much as the, entire, as the market value of the entire company. The portfolio includes a 40% stake in Alibaba, the Chinese online trader that's believed to be lining up a takeover bid. Shares in both Yahoo and Alibaba have risen on the news. And shares in Research in Motion have dipped as the struggling BlackBerry maker dampened down speculation over a takeover. RIM's shares rose to over $14 on Wednesday before closing at just under that figure following reports of Amazon lining up a bid. The firm announced it intends to spearhead a turnaround rather than seek buyers. RIM has dropped nearly 80% this year as it dramatically lost market share to Apple's iPhone. And just on that story as well, both Nokia and Microsoft uh, have also been named as potential interested parties. But in these situations, pretty much anyone uh, is good for it. RIM, the problem, as you said there, is that the stock has plunged 80%. It's ripe for a takeover. You've also got disappointing sales of things like its playbook. That was its tablet computer. And it just cannot keep up with the iPhone right now uh, in terms of uh, sales, uh, whatever it seems to put out on the market at the moment. Apple just seems to stay, one, seems to stay I should say, one one step ahead. Now, I have to say that if you're watching us over breakfast, I'd just like to apologise for this last story, Owen, because it's to do with uh, oysters and herpes. Oysters, French oysters have herpes. Uh, now, this is decimating. We shouldn't laugh about this, really. It's decimated the stock of oysters across uh, front, or up and down France's west coast. Uh, this is something that's been uh, happening for a few years now. It's the fourth season, in fact, that the oyster stocks across France have had this disease. Uh, it's this season, though, killed. Uh, it's estimated that this virus has killed between 70 and 80 percent of the stock this year. So it's the first time that uh, oyster farmers and fishermen are really starting to notice the knock on effect uh, in terms of the stock uh, impact. And the French love oysters at Christmas, and this is pushing prices up. I love oysters too. Yes, you're absolutely right. Normally the French, uh, this is the season for them, of course. We're in the run-up to Christmas. It's a great Christmas treat to have fresh oysters, on, not just on Christmas Day, but New Year's Day and during the festive season. And as you say, the knock-on effect has been that it's pushing wholesale prices of oysters up around 65%. Uh, in some parts of Paris, that has pushed the prices up to as much as uh, 14 or even 17 euros a dozen. Though I have to say, my local market, you can get them for a lot less than that, but I won't tell you where it is because you'll all want to uh, go there and buy them up. Uh, it means also that the season is shorter for oysters as well. Normally, you have an oyster season that can last... Uh, from between September and May. In large parts of France now, it's confined to just December and January because of the shortage of stocks. Uh, it does sound bad, and it is bad, and yet uh, if you're an oyster connoisseur, the smart money is saying that with less stock, oyster farmers are actually spending more time in cultivating what they've got, and that means you get more meat in your oyster and generally a better-tasting oyster. I haven't noticed, so I can't confirm that. All right. Thanks very much, Owen. And for our viewers who want to follow you on Twitter, just a quick reminder of your address. At Owen France 24. Let me know if you're having oysters for Christmas this year and what they taste like. All right. Thanks very much for that look at the day's business news, Owen. Do stay tuned to France 24. We'll have all the latest headlines for you coming up in just a couple of minutes.
crowded shopping centres and overpriced tats, the culture show is putting the magic back into Christmas. Join us as we uncover the delights at Europe's oldest Christmas market in Strasbourg in the east of France and we meet the modern day Santa Claus. Don't miss culture, Saturday, 10.40 a.m. Paris time on France 24. Two in a canoe. Or maybe a few hundred passing in Poznan. That one girl at the seaside. Or those few in the yacht on the bay. This lot of young people in Gdansk. Or maybe this one with the bison will convince you. Eight scouts, two on a wall. 5,602 guitarists in Rotswar. In Warsaw, 50,000 football fans. Actors in Krakow. How many poles does it take to convince you to come to Poland? Feel invited. 